Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Safe Summit customer interview series. Um, this morning, I have the privilege of being with Auden Hughes. Uh, she's from American Express, and she has the auspicious title of Director Enterprise Agility Success. So that's a pretty tall order. So pleased to meet you, Auden, and I look forward to our conversation. Thank you, Dean. Let's start with a big question. Uh, who are you? What do you do at American Express? And what does American Express have to do with uh, uh, technical and business agility these days? So I am a part of an agility COE, and I lead the Agile Safe coaching and training practices uh, that supports um, all of our teams across the enterprise, um, technology as well as business. Uh, we have um, oh the gamut of uh, technical agility and um, business agility going on at the moment. Um, on top of our uh, normal initiatives around uh, improving our, our agility, we are also, uh, of course, trying to strengthen our CICD pipelines. Um, we're doing a lot of work around um, incorporating BDD and TDD into our systems and, and trying to get those groups that we might have missed initially with our uh, our implementations in, in the last couple of years, uh, bringing them into the fold as well. And from a business agility perspective, we're doing a lot of work around our portfolios. Um, you know, strengthening their capabilities around uh, defining strategies and uh, disseminating that work down to our teams, but also building some robustness into our planning processes, um, moving away from annual planning to um, a more uh, iterative process at that level, which is um, it, which is an interesting um, process to go through when you're talking about more than a hundred large strategic initiatives <laughs> every single year, trying to narrow those those down and, and focus on those. Um, that's our big thing for this year. I'm going to come back to a number of those topics because they're pretty fascinating. But but first of all. What's the larger scope here? I mean, you're Amex, you, you guys are a pretty big deal. Um, just in the IT area, I, I assume you've got thousands of practitioners that are moving to SAFE or Agile or Agile at Scale or Scrum or some combinations? We do, um, you know, and, and of course we have um, our entire development work stream. So our, all, of our, all of our products and platforms that our uh, fabulous engineers work on and then we also have our operations staff who have to support all of this mm -hmm. and trying to um, combine uh, different types of agile in order to, um, to best support not only uh, the work that's coming through the system, but also improve our quality, improve um, our, our ability to make changes very quickly. Um, and, and of course, with, with uh, the least amount of failure possible. So this year has, um, We've had a lot of focus around um, bringing in our Kanban teams, strengthening mm -hmm. them, making sure that they're in um, our, our systems so that their work is transparent. And um, also taking a look at the types of teams that we have, you know, with, with some of these large platforms, 40 plus year old platforms, we have um, a lot of component work that's being done and it's not always reusable. It's not always globally consumable. Um, how do we make that uh, better for uh, our teams that are trying to uh, make, make big feature changes um, and get them to the market very quickly? And how do we, we create kind of a flow of work that incorporates all three of those things in a, in a holistic way? You know, 20 years ago, um, the question of reuse was huge and the reuse of architectural components was kind of the main thing. Mm -hmm. If you look at processes like the Rational Unified Process, that was arch you know, architecture centric and use case driven. Um, the trick with all that, of course, is you, tell it, you tended to develop, or at least that was the intent, develop robust architectures, but then you focus a lot on the, the elements of the architecture and the components and you optimize those, and yet flow could be difficult to achieve because you're engaged in all this exploiting reuse, and therefore when I want to make a change to a component or a subsystem, well, I have other people already using that in the other way. So do you see this tension now, and is it, do you lean more towards, wow, it's, it's less reuse and more velocity, or more reuse creates more velocity? How do you see that trade-off? 
I think the, the, the way that we've been looking at this is, is really an inner sourcing model where uh, the majority of our components that are needed for, for multiple products, for multiple customer journeys, um, have that capability built into them. Letting folks uh, collaborate um, on these components in, in a way that makes, the, makes them more robust, not only for, for reusability sake, but, but more robust and um, more universal. We've had a lot of really great adoption there. And um, I, I see that continuing forward. I, th I think that's going to become a bigger and bigger priority for us. You and I, or at least American Express and I, we go way back in various formats. I mean, I mean, uh, meetings at various events from, you know, Agile Alliance meetings to I met with your executives a couple different times. Is this been a migration to understanding lean Agile is the right way of working? Or was there a tipping point that brought you either to a scaled Agile model or to SAFE? I think the, the, initial, the initial thought process was, was really around improving flow. Um, like most large companies, we have multiple, multiple silos. Not only do we have business silos, um, we have mimicked those business silos in our technology environment. And I don't think this is at all uncommon, at least uh, the, the folks that I tend to um, network with um, face similar, similar challenges as we do. Initially, um, and this is prior to myself joining American Express, uh, initially it was really about you know, adopting this framework and incorporating all of these, these best practices as a way of improving flow. Mm -hmm. Being able to get to market um, significantly faster than we were able to before. And, and this is just our competitive landscape. You have, you know, multiple fintechs out there and, and everybody's trying to grab a little bit of market share and, and come up with, uh, the, you know, the newest, latest, greatest product. I think what we've learned in the last three years is that it's not a one size fits all and that the, the silos themselves are a lot harder to break down than we thought they were going to be. Mm -hmm. We've had some really great success with virtual organizations and uh, whether those are persistent virtual organizations or, or short term for a large initiative. And I think having that flexibility and being able to, to say, okay, this, this might not work in this one environment, but how do we create, you know, how do we implement the, the, the pieces that increase the communication and therefore reduce our dependencies? You know, dependencies being the biggest risk you have with a, a heavily siloed environment. Um, so building that flexibility in the last couple of years has really changed the way that we looked at agility overall. And if you think about um, our, what I mentioned earlier about our infrastructure teams, having those teams um, available in a true like system team fashion where they're where they're readily available to the, the teams that are, are working on features uh, and they're able to respond quickly. That to me um, has been um, a big change moment for us and realizing that that we, we have to take a system view, a system wide view and not to try to optimize silo by silo. Mm -hmm. Did the virtual nature of the agile release train help that process to get people communicating across silo and focus on the flow and the end-to-end -end case without having to worry about, oh, I'm going to change my job title or my description or my reporting? We, we had an, an, immediate, uh, an immediate increase in flow. Our, our throughput, uh, the very first PI um, increased uh, some 50%. Um, so having that immediate, uh, that immediate bump, um, and that's purely from planning together, yeah. from, from open communication, from solutioning together, that in, on its own, I, I think where these virtual models, when you, when you have a persistent hierarchy, the stress that it causes in the system because of, of, of people, of, where, what's going to happen to my job next month? Yeah. What is my role in this? How do I, how do I tackle my day to day when I have dotted lines and 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 uh, my my traditional hierarchy to support? Um, that's something that we continue to try to figure out. And and how best do we um, how do best do we serve the people um, that make this this ecosystem um, work on a day to day basis? 
uh, it is a challenge, um, but I, I think the virtual net, the vir creating these virtual structures is the uh, easiest way to immediately improve flow and test and learn what the organization might look like in the future. Yeah, we know, as you know, position that as the second operating system. The hierarchy is not going away, right? People right. still have to have bosses. Expense reports get approved, budgets get established, uh, uh, legal practices have to be put in place for the various areas you operate in. So I think we always had a notion that that, that had to be there, but it wasn't doing what we needed. And for a while it was like, well, let's just you know, undo all of that. And I think now we understand with the leadership of Cotter and others that, that it's a matter of instantiating a second system, one that is oriented, or, oriented around flow. Early on in your conversation here, you mentioned uh, a set of technical practices that you know, are, are, are great mnemonics, CICD, BDD, and TDD. So much is said and thought about the adoption of Agile and Lean and Agile at scale and, and Scrum, et cetera, without, I think, reflecting back on what made this model work to begin with. And to me, that was, you know, I, I learned XP before I learned anything else. I've never forgot that. How quickly did you always know that you had to really double down on your technical practices? Or was that driven by establishing a model that had flow and then you wanted to optimize flow? So you discovered if you didn't understand the requirements for a system via BDD, you couldn't really code it or deploy it. When, was that always present as a parallel realization or did it come as, for many, for many clients, it comes as kind of a, oh, there's a second order problem. Now that we're oriented towards flow, we need to dramatically improve the quality of what we do so, so that the, the functionality goes faster. You know, one of the things that we learned really, really early on um, when we, were, we started doing this, when we started talking about customer journeys as a way to organize, what we realized is that our testing systems weren't built around those customer journeys. You know, a good portion of our testing didn't take customer journeys into test scenario mm -hmm. work. So as we're, we're developing test scenarios, we're not taking the full the full set of steps that a customer takes in order to do, you know, to carry out a transaction or, or to, to sign up for a new product. In order to facilitate that, what we started to see um, was where these practices would, would fit in. You know, we have a, a very large system where uh, there's just a wide variety of, of, of adoption of, of everything from, from lean practices to agile practices to these what I call technical excellence practices. So in looking at um, having that exposure to, to that layer of a problem um, coincided with a, a push for us to you know, really understand the experience from, a, from an engineering perspective. What were our, our engineers thinking, doing, feeling? How did they, Inter how are they interacting with these systems and how could we improve life for them? So we had to establish empathy for engineering staff to understand flow better. I, I, and I think that that's part of the, part of the journey is, is you, your, your view, your, your level of empathy expands out. You know, when you start off with being, uh, you know, turning that, turning that lens to your customers, then what you start realizing from there is that, oh, you know, my scrum masters are my customers. My product owners are my customers. How do, how do we uh, improve their processes? Because at the end of the day, if all of our internal processes um, are optimized, uh, un well understood, transparent, we can only serve our customers better. What has safe or scaled agile done to help that process for you? Why did you gravitate to us and what types of products and services do you leverage from the company? Oh, it's, it's, there's, there's so much. <laughs> this is a, a very rich topic for me. I think very early on, um, what I recognized was uh, the partnership um, was available and that we weren't taking, we weren't, we weren't taking advantage, we weren't leveraging. Um, leveraging that in any way. Um, I think there is some kind of tendency to um, not to engage with your community um, when you're trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's, it's uh, always easier to do so when, when everything is, is settled and it looks perfect and everything's working perfectly. And um, I'm a firm believer in, um, in, in taking advantage of other people's knowledge. You know, I am not the first person that has had this challenge, more than likely. 
other folks have gone before me, and bringing that into our organization and broadening it out. So having um, one of the things that um, I really love is our voice of the customer group. And, and having um, the ability to ask questions, to collaborate on problems, uh, be brought in when you guys are, are, are sorting out problems yourselves and, and uh, looking for feedback. I, I think that's phenomenal and, and it's a uh, you know, testament to that you operate in the way that you're asking us to operate to some extent. Thanks. That there's... It, it's, it's not easy for us either. Um, part of being agile is being transparent. So being transparent mm -hmm. is we don't know what we're doing here. We don't know how we're necessarily going to address the lack of face-to-face -face training opportunities, but we engage with our customers very early on because when we added customer centricity to SAFE, we became more customer centric, even though it was always there. But when you call that explicitly, it really changes the way you view things. It, it um, does. And, and I think it improves your relationships immediately. And, and then those things just continue to build on, on each other, on themselves. Uh, we've done it ourselves within our coaching practice. We have personas. Mm -hmm. we, we do product planning sessions just like a scrum team would do. And, and it's not always easy, um, but it gets us into the right mindset and it builds their, our relationships with our customers. We've seen such extraordinary, you know, I've witnessed such extraordinary progress in your company. And you're at a scope where even five or seven years ago, people didn't know for sure, can we scale at this level successfully? Right. And while I, I know you well enough to know that the challenges aren't all behind us, there's challenges ahead. Um, as you think about your experience, you think about other customers, large companies like yourself, what one bit of advice would you give to say, do this or try this first, or, or how would you help them get started down the path? We're a pretty pragmatic outfit. We're always looking for advice as to how, how you could help our other customers achieve success more quickly. I think the one thing that I, I would strongly recommend, build your foundation. It is uh, so much harder and, and we've learned, you know, don't layer these, especially more advanced practices, don't layer it on top of waterfall. Mm -hmm. You're going to spend more time undoing and more time causing stress throughout the system. So really embrace lean, um, embrace your agile foundations, uh, make sure that your scrum teams or your Kanban teams or your XP teams, make sure that they're, that they're, they're, they're comfortable, they're confident in their process and, and they're, you know, they're past the, the, the storming phase before you introduce more change. Where we have seen our, our, our best implementations have been with organizations where the foundation was laid and it, and it was left to sit and mature before we started making more additional changes to it. And, and don't the, try to jump from one thing to another. There's got to be a saying around this. Is if the teams aren't agile, nobody is. <laughs> And, and lastly, I don't know if those fit this in the interview or not, what could we do for you as a company that we're not? What, what, what things should we do better on, on, for you? I really can't think of anything there. The, the amount of support that's available is, is really extensive and fits with a lot of different learning models. So if, if I'm you know, interested, if, if I learn best by talking to another customer, um, you guys are, are happy to facilitate that. Um, if, if I want to grab a book or, or search on the web, that's also available to me too. And the classes, um, I, I really think continuing down that path of, of offering a wide variety of resources, uh, to me, that's been um, one of the best things about, about, about working um, at Amex and working with, with, um, with you guys is that we've, we have that, wide variety of learning opportunities available to us. Well, thanks. Well, thank you very much for sharing your insights and the tips for others. I appreciate your support of SAFE and I hope you know we're there for you. So if you need Absolutely. the company, you need me, it's just ping away. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks a ton, Auden. And I'll, I'm sure I'll see you face to face at some point in the field. I hope so. Yes. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> thank you.